for those uh, listening out there on this uh, uh, webinar or whatever it's called for uh, World War II friends, uh, we all, Pat and Frank and I, were in the initial group to organize Friends of the World War II Memorial. But prior to that, we were members of the American Battle Monuments Commission. Uh, Pat was a, in, in, and I were appointed in 1994, 1994, Frank a little bit later. Uh, but the American Battle Monuments Commission was given the, uh, I guess, the duty under legislation passed in 1993 to find a site, develop a design, find a, a design architect, and then pay for and build a national World War II memorial. It was a big job for a, a relatively small government agency. Uh, the three of us ended up on what was called the Site and Design Committee. Uh, for the memorial. And so our work, uh, which started in 1994, uh, and Pat was there at the very beginning, um, uh, basically continued for seven years until 2001 when we were replaced by uh, the George W. Bush Commission that came in in 2001. However, by that time, we had the site uh, nailed down. We had an architect that had been selected. We had a design approved by the Commission of Fine Arts in, in the National Capital Planning Commission. And so it was quite a seven years. And uh, anybody that wants to uh, get more detail on this, I just wanted to up front show a book that you can get through Friends of the World War II Memorial, uh, Tribute to a Generation by David Winkler. Uh, it's available to Friends, or you can get it at the Naval Institute Press. But it, it's an interesting history, I think, of what generally happened. And of course, the leader of our group, uh, Hayden Williams, is no longer with us. He was an incredible guy. And then uh, Helen Fagan, who was a member of our group also, died this past year at over the age of 100, I think 104. Uh, so Helen was a Holocaust survivor. Uh, Hayden, a uh, retired ambassador from uh, San Francisco and a, just a tremendous leader as a commissioner of the ABMC and, the, and of our committee. So we pay tribute to them. And uh, But let's get started with uh, 1994. And uh, Pat, you may want to say something about your early memories of how we found that site and how Hayden said this is the place. <laughs> Hayden had that at a place from the very beginning before we ever officially looked at it as a site. Uh, yeah, I, I came on to the Battle of Monuments Commission in uh, 94, and out of that was picked to be uh, with you and with Hayden on the original committee to do the site and design work. And that was 94. But our job was to oversee the competition for the design. And we did that. And uh, then when, when the design was picked, then to work with the architect and his associates on getting it put together piece by piece by piece over a lot of years. Yeah, I remember uh, in 1994, uh, before I was on the, uh, the committee, actually, uh, Hayden had invited any members of the board that could make it to come to a lot of these meetings. So I went down to one in, in uh, January of 95, uh, and that was the day I remember, Pat, we went around and looked at several proposed sites for the memorial. Yeah. And Hayden didn't like any of them. And when we walked across the end of that uh, reflecting pool near the rainbow pool, he said, this is where this the memorial is. The <laughs> and it wasn't even on the approved list yet. <laughs> yeah. And uh, essentially, uh, by July of that year, he had begun to convince Jay Carter Brown at the, at the uh, Commission of Fine Arts who was sort of the lead guy uh, in terms of uh, planning and approvals in Washington, that the, uh, something as immense as the Second World War is significant. We should be building it on the National Mall along the east-west axis, the main the street of our country, you might say. So uh, Hayden had this idea that between the Washington Monument and Lincoln, there was a place to put this. And uh, I think that was one of the, you know, he always thought that the site was maybe his biggest contribution. If anybody is in Washington, goes to Washington, uh, it, it, you know, it seems today, I think, like this World War II memorial was always there. But it, it, of course, right. it took vision, it took a lot of uh, work and, and so forth. Um, after we had the site approved, 
uh, of course, the president, uh, President Clinton, he wanted to have a an event there that this will be the future site. <laughs> so that was that date sort of pushed us along. And Frank was in the White House uh, in the Jimmy Carter days, and so. Uh, Frank, you probably can appreciate the fact the White House saying we wanted to have an event at what was going to be the future site of the memorial became a driving force. Yeah, that, that, that put an explanation point on it. There was no, once the president said, this is where it's going to be, and then the Secretary of the Interior, uh, who oversees the uh, the grounds, it, they kind of locked it in. And I just to back up a little bit, Raleigh, uh, he said that uh, Hayden considered this his greatest accomplishment, getting the site. And he had so many accomplishments, the leadership he provided. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to pick <clears throat> one, but i just thinking this morning, I think that's probably right. Once you got the site, then you can always play with the design, which as Pat said, we did. We kept refining it, refining it, refining it to meet Jay Carter Brown when it done, done this way, done that way. And, we compromised, um, but it, we had a soft opening when once it was completed. We were invited to it. They didn't advertise it. it; just had veterans come in. And I don't remember the exact date. But we went. We had a meeting, and Hayden said, "Let's go down at night." I don't know if you remember this. We yeah. got in a van. We went down and looked, and he said, "You know, it looks like it's always been here." And he was exactly yeah. right. <laughs> Maybe a month after the opening, the World War II Memorial just fit right into that spot, and it just looked like it had always been there. It didn't look new and shiny. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that was a win. That showed that that we and a lot of people working with us and for us. So. Yeah. In 1995, uh, once the the site had been determined, and then, of course, we had to – find a, an architect design person. Uh, and I don't know if uh, Pat remembers, but the, the American Battle Monuments Commission, their first idea was, well, let's have a very select group of people we're going to ask to do this. However, there was an outcry from the architectural community that we should have a national competition. Okay. So we did have a national competition. And again, Williams was right front and center here. And uh, it, it ended up, uh, we had like f- over 400 entries originally. Uh, yeah. And then uh, there was a blind jury uh, as to which ones were the best, and it narrowed to six. And then there was a second competition between those six and a second design jury. When they took the names off the back of the proposals, there he was, Friedrich St. Florian from the Rhode Island School of Design. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, all of this, though, took time. I mean, here's a legislation that passes in 1993. Mm-hmm. Now we're getting into 1996, and we're just getting the designer going. <laughs> but uh, once Friedrich came on board, uh, we began to make progress uh, until uh, July of '97, when he uh, we had, he had a, come, came up with his proposal, a more more concrete proposal. But but by July of '97, quite a bit of opposition had built up to it because it was quite massive in scale. And the pet and Frank, you remember remember those first drawings? There were big berms and educational oh, yeah. space and lots of stuff. I mean, in that first go around, it, it it didn't hold up, but that's my recollection. Hayden Williams, from day one, when he became associated as the president of our group, uh, was key to getting the World War II Memorial built. He devoted his entire life to that project from 1994 until 2001 and beyond on getting getting the design uh, site, getting the architect, and then pushing along all the things that we wanted in that memorial. Hayden Hayden was Mr. World War II Memorial. After we had, uh, in 1997, the, the Commissioner of Fine Arts said, old, hold it, we're not going with this original design the way it is. It's too big, it's too massive. You're trying to do too much there on that area in that, in that site. Hayden came up to our house on Chautauqua Lake. So this is a little personal vignette and he was down in the dumps and he, we were talking about it driving up from DC up here to Western New York. And 
The next day, uh, Saturday, he got on the phone with Friedrich uh, down in Rhode Island. And he said, uh, Friedrich, uh, do you know a general about a, a General Smith uh, or, who was in, a Marine in, in uh, Korea and are surrounded by 300,000 troops? No, Friedrich had never heard of the guy. He said, well, he, the press asked him, are, are we going to retreat, General? And he said, no, no, we're not going to retreat. Hell, we're going to advance in a different direction. <laughs> and so Hayden said to Friedrich, Friedrich, are you willing to go in a different direction with us? So we don't want to have to go out and find a new designer if we can get something done. Because the lowered plaza and the uh, vert some type of vertical architecture around that rainbow pool is was the core of what uh, yeah. we want to do. So. He said, yes, he would work with us. And then, of course, Frank, you were there during all those years of, uh, of the, you might say, the redesign. We had to get a new design concept approved by the Commission of Fine Arts before we could move ahead. And uh, a lot of meetings, I mean, we, you, you and Pat can confirm this, but we were in D.C. probably every month. Every month. And yeah. uh, for was, years. meetings would start on a Friday night because I was working at the time and we worked Saturday and Sundays, and then yep. we we worked in an architect's office, and the first they cut off the, either the air conditioning or the heat on Fridays. <laughs> we were often sitting in there in our coats <laughs> in the winter. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I did. I came in uh, during the public hearings, and Pat can tell us how many. I think it was ninety, but uh, after the site was. This pit, I think it's important to mention the fight for the site approval after we chosen it. And that was a, a hell of a fight. Uh, Pat and, and, and Raleigh and, of course, Hayden was in the middle of it. I came in there, and I was some help in those last ones and or in getting some people to come speak up, uh, some old friends of mine. Um, but that was a... a, a a small group of people in Northwest Washington that led the opposition, but we finally won that. And then we went through the design phase and I was there for the big reveal when, when Frederick came down and brought the model and said, this is what we're going to do now. And everybody approved that. But then you remember the, uh, the 56 columns that were there. I think yeah. there was solid. And Pat we remembers that we we said well why can't we open them up and make it more visible so well yeah, yeah you could do that when we would have opposition and we had a lot of it over the course of all these years every hearing we went to they tried to get the site stopped uh, the, the opposition did uh and hayden would send you pat <laughs> up to the press because you had friends at the white house i think with helen thomas and other people that you could contact and yeah uh I thought you were terrific as a spokesperson for the Battle Monuments Commission during that time. And, and sometimes Hayden would say, Pat, now wear your uniform. With that general star there, she was an authoritative figure. <laughs> Still is. <laughs> but yeah. in her in her uniform, she was particularly intimidating. <laughs> we had a lot of people to fight to get this memorial built where it was built. A lot of people wanted to give us places that were insignificant to place the World War II more. <laughs> and we fought and said, no, 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 no. It's going to be right here, right in that pool area, which we reduced by 15% in order to make it the centerpiece of the World War II memorial. You know, what you put your finger on there, Pat, is I think one of the real breakthroughs in design is when Friedrich lowered the vertical architecture so it came under those elm trees. Yeah. It made it more of a landscape, part of the landscape there right. on, on the location. I think that began, began to win over a lot of opposition. We, we did everything we could to keep from having to destroy trees, although a few had to go. But still, we tried not to take away any of the existing uh, greenery that was there already. In terms of the fight, uh, Frank, I think uh, people don't should know, I think, that 
Um, just as we were leaving the, our, our job, as the new commission came in, the, the opposition the committee to save our mall, they were called, had gotten some money and they'd brought a lawsuit to get the memorial stopped in the courts. And that lawsuit had worked its way up, I think, to the Court of Appeals level in Washington, D.C. And uh, it, be, it began to alarm people up on the Hill who wanted the memorial built in, in the Senate and the House. There was a lot of support for it. Yep. And Frank, I think that's when you turned out with your Rolodex and began to make a lot of phone calls. We weren't even in on the commission. I mean, this was some of this happened after we were off. But finally, the, uh, the House and Senate did pass legislation. It was it ended up being signed by President George W. Bush. And it said that after all of our work had been done, basically, we're not going to move it now. It's going to be done here and in this location. But yeah, I, understanding uh, what any court may say. Right, and you you were involved very much in that in that fight uh, well, near the end of I, our terms, but also into the beyond that. I think. Well, again, it was Hayden. He called me and told me, he said, "Can you find out when the vote's going to be?" I I did, and he said, "Well, we've got to help." And I, he said, "Do you know any senators?" And I said, "Well, there's a hundred up um, up there." I said, "I know about fifty five or 60. and. So he said, well, which ones do you know? I told him, he said, well, I know others or I could call them. So we split it up. Uh, Hayden made a lot of those calls, too. Uh, but I was able to either talk to the senators themselves or whoever was the most important person in their office. It might have been the personal secretary. It might have been the AA, might have, you know, whoever. I always knew who that person was. So um, we called them and we... <clears throat> called some of the house leadership but most of the sense so it was important um uh, it kind of ended the fight I said okay that's it and one other person i think probably should uh, be mentioned uh and that is hayden developed a strong friendship with jay carter brown who was the yeah. president of the commission of fine arts and uh, after that happened, and, and Brown realized that we wanted to be collaborative in what we were doing at the memorial, not just an enemy, not, not being in his face all the time. And he and Hayden had a strong personal relationship, which really helped uh, this whole thing move along because we had to have the approval of the Commission of Fine Arts every step of the way. And yeah. uh, we weren't the Lone Ranger here. And, and so I think that... Uh, Jay Carter Brown, uh, Hayden always wanted to make sure that he received some proper recognition for his role in, in getting all this done, his commission also, but he was the leader of it and a very strong leader. After the legislation passed and was signed by the president, I mean, the Park Service then gave a construction permit so, so the yeah. construction could go ahead. And that, the deal was done then. I mean, we weren't there then, but I mean... Uh, you were still a part of that uh, last-minute fight to make sure that it did get done, and yeah. uh, which I have always commended you for. And uh, uh, so you, you, you'll recall, even after we weren't uh, officially the Site and Design Committee anymore, Hayden renamed us the Old Working Group. <laughs> he, would, <laughs> he would call us together in Washington, and we'd have meetings, and Amen. Uh, that group between 2004 and then finally in 2007, we created Friends of the World War II Memorial. Again, it was a Hayden's initiative. Uh, but we never, even though we weren't officially uh, running the show anymore, it didn't matter to Williams. We were still the guys <laughs> that had responsibility. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We met in the Cosmos Club. And I've been in a lot of places in D.C. with a lot of important people. When I sat down and looked around in there, I said, my gosh. And Hayden had invited all these people. Uh, Pat remembers it well. And each one stood up and spoke. And that's when we formed uh, Friends of World War II. But we had the uh, backing of a bipartisan leadership in D.C. Uh, because of Hayden's leadership. And we essentially, it was self-financing for a few years. I contributed an office and, and, and with Ruth Rogers, she was, you know, stamps and, and Hayden would call her. She, she worked for me, but actually Hayden commandeered her. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, Frank, that uh, uh, we did, wouldn't have had 
Friends of the World War II Memorial. You'd found us an attorney that would incorporated us. We had our offices at your office on 13th Street, yeah. Friends of the World War II Memorial. For two years, I was Hayden's unpaid executive director. <laughs> and he right. would call me and say, you got to get to Washington. I say, yeah, yeah. So I would get down there and finally we negotiated a partnership agreement with the National Park Service. And yeah, yeah, thanks to you. Yeah, and then 2007, uh, it was shortly after we incorporated in 2007 that we got that partnership agreement. So uh, it was quite a, you know, that old group we had of site and design uh, carried on into uh, the, the later years. You know, another big moment happened, and it wasn't really uh, a site and design issue, but uh, in that 1997 meeting where we had an unveiling of the models in the White House and stuff, that's where the President uh, Clinton invited Bob Dole to come to the meeting. And what I don't think Dole realized was that he was going to be asked to be chairman <laughs> of the fundraising. And it ended up, he said yes, but he wanted to have a corporate uh, co-sponsor or leader. So he got that's Fred right. Smith or the organization did, American Metal Monuments Commission and John Hurling and others over there got, got Smith to say yes. So we had a, a, at the same time we were finishing up site and design, this is in the 1997, 98, 99 period, uh, the fundraising got going. And uh, all of us, the three of us here, I'm sure we did had something to do with the people we knew to help with fundraising, but uh, we pretty much stuck to our knitting on site and design. But on the other hand, a huge effort was going on to raise the money. Uh, and one of the early uh, decisions made, and this, is, this goes way back to 1995, uh, is the American Battle Monuments Commission had done a study that said we could build a World War II memorial for $25 million. And Pat, you were at the meeting. I was there uh, where Jess Hay seconded Hayden Williams' motion that it be raised to $100 million. Everybody yeah. gasped in the room. We can never <laughs> raise $100 million, right? And uh, it ended up, of course, they raised $200 million and netted out yeah. about 150 or more to build the memorial. So as people watch this program, they, they're going to hear Bob Dole and Fred Smith and in that, I think, in the public face of the memorial, Tom Hanks, who was helping raise the money. Yeah, he was, big, strong made a big and, and we were in, sort of in the background at that time, but still doing our work of site and design. Well, I was called in um, again in Hayden, the man who was a head of, who was a professional fundraiser, had been uh, called in and worked over there. And he wanted to meet with me. And I said, sure. And he said, uh, do you know people on boards? And I said, yeah, I think I do. And he, so he started going. He had a list of boards. And we started going through them, boards of the Fortune 500 company and, and foundations. And I found 15 to 20 people I knew. So he said, well, you call them. And I did. And, I, and we got one board in particular, we got uh, two million dollars from. Another one, we got a million dollars from. Others, we got five hundred thousand dollars from. It was just in in all of our lives, we meet people and have acquaintances. And I just happened, and they and they remembered me, and I told them what I was doing. So I was involved in the fundraising. Um, I don't know if you ever knew that, but yeah, I Hayden do. knew it because he told me to do it. You know? We knew it. <laughs> And, and when you talk about fundraising, we also need to tip our hat to uh, Jess Hay down in Texas, who had been on the Exxon Mobil board, the uh, AT and T board, which AT and T today and stuff. And and uh, Jess was on the Memorial Advisory Board, not on uh, our committee. But uh, I always tip my hat a lot to Jess also for. Uh, his skills in fundraising and his contribution. Yeah. yeah. The last memorial that had been built was the Korean War. And I think it was 25 million, 30 million, something like that. And they used that as a, as a yardstick and said, well, that costs this, therefore this one will cost this. And, and Jess would say, look, Korean War is important. This other thing is important, but World War II is different. It just have a different ring to it. I think we can raise a lot more money. It strikes, sparks, it strikes a different chord in people's mind when you say World War II. And he was exactly right. 
and we did fundraising the traditional way of first, you know, calling foundations and then we had direct mail. But when we got Tom Hanks to come on and do public service announcements was when the fundraising really changed. I was over there a lot monitoring it. And it just started coming in over the transom, small donations. My uncle was in World War II, or my cousin or my brother. And, I, and I'm taking, you know, I'm sending $25. I'm sending $100 because it's all time Hanks. Hanks, uh, I think John Hurling sent him a letter, would you help us? And he wrote back and said, I'll do whatever I can to help you. He had just completed that Private Ryan movie. It starts yes. and ends at the yeah. Normandy Cemetery, right, where we, as American Battle Monuments Commission people, mm -hmm. we basically ran that cemetery. And it's powerful, that movie. Uh, I'll never forget when we dedicated the, uh, not, not dedicated the site, but we had that sort of shovel. Groundbreaking. Yeah. Ground we had breaking. that yeah. event. We were getting ready to build. We didn't, we, we, we turned dirt, I guess. And Hanks came to that thing. This was after a lot of the fundraising had been done. And I thought he'd make a speech or something. But he read from Ernie Pyle's book about the Second World War. And you could have heard a pin drop. Yes. I mean, yeah. he, he didn't take glory. He didn't ask for thanks or appreciation. He said, I want to tell you what the World War II was, was like. Let me read you from Ernie Pyle. I mean, every veteran there, I mean, was I, tears were coming down, I think, when Hanks did that. At least they were coming from my eyes. I mean, I, I'll never forget that. But Yeah, another celebrity we have, well, I think we should mention, and Tom and Meredith broke off. Tom had just written The Greatest Generation. And if I remember correctly, they, he and Meredith gave all the royalties of that book. And they were the single largest individual mm -hmm. contributors the largest corporate contributor was Walmart because they had 87,000 veterans work, working for them, World War II veterans. They were greeters mostly. And so the Walton family said, well, well, we'll just let them, we'll match whatever they can collect. But they, they predicted they would probably get 2,000, I mean, $2 million. Well, at 7 million, they quit counting. <laughs> so Walmart, you know, uh, man, uh, matched that seven million with fourteen, so we had fourteen million there. We had a pretty smooth transition from our group to the other group, and they actually extended. Uh, we weren't quite done. They said we well, can have another six months. Why is it, Pat? Yeah, I think. And it was the inscriptions we were working on at that time. Everything yeah. else had been done, so we had to grant it, and we had to fit these inscriptions in between the joints. And, but you had to be had to be big enough to see, but not too big to take up too much room. You had to balance it between the different forces, between the Atlantic and the Pacific. So those were long, long, long sessions working those those, those inscriptions. Right. Williams had an idea that outside the memorial grounds that we now know, up in the woods, um, the Constitution Garden area that there yeah. could be a circle of remembrance where families could come and sit quietly and look at the memorial from a distance, think about the sacrifices made, their family members involved, and so forth. Well, you worked on that, Pat, diligently, yeah. and there was a, we had a doggone plan for it, but at the end of the day, the Park Service said, well, we've had enough. <laughs> yeah. We'll just put our usual benches around there, and we, 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 and I think the American Battle of Monuments Commission was worried about the money it would cost and everything else, but I wanted to just say, uh, I was down in Washington just a month ago, and uh, thanks to Holly Rotundi and Friends of the World War II Memorial and, and people who contributed money, that circle of remembrance is now it's being, being done. Yeah, and, finally uh, done so, after all these you know, years. And, and I give Pat, I give you a lot of credit for that because I know Hayden had sort of put that in your lap. You and did. You've done your job. And at the end of the day, we weren't there anymore and it got lost in the shuffle. But hey, it sure did. And, yeah. I, and I was after them constantly from, from the time of. From the from dedication on about when are you really going to do the circle of remembrance that it was intended, yeah. and now they're doing it finally. But it took how many years? How many years? And there's one other Pat Foot story that I want to relate, and Pat, you can react to it as you wish. But after we left the commission, 
and they were working on the inscriptions. Uh, Pat had worked hard on one, recognizing the role of women during the Second World War, both in, in the armed forces as well as on the home front. And uh, when we got the new recommended inscriptions, there was no longer a woman's voice in there. And Pat, <laughs> she got a hold of her friends over at the White House, like Helen Thomas and stuff. And the next thing, uh, the new commission, knew there was a headline in the uh, Washington Post, I think, that said they're getting rid of the women's <laughs> role in the World War II Memorial. Oh, my gosh. All hell broke loose. Excuse my language, but that's what happened. Amen. And thanks to you, Pat, uh, <laughs> uh, we got our voice Kelly finally gave you a call and said, don't back off, back off. We're going to put another quote back in. It might not be the one you want. But they'll, and so there is a quote. Uh, on one. And of it's pretty good. It's not the one we wanted, but it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 But that, that was something that got done after we left the commission. But I, yeah. I give my uh, hats off, Frank, to General Foote on that one, because I, <laughs> I think she was personally responsible for that. <laughs> yeah. And Hayden's original vision was to have tattoos like they had in Edinburgh or like he used to have on the barges. He had in Potomac, you know, ceremonies for uh, the national holidays with a band and all. And that went into the design. If you go into it, those steps where people could sit and would become like an, an amphitheater. And in fact, we even, if you remember it, Jess Hayes' suggestion, we wired that whole thing with, uh, uh, so you could have speakers and Wi-Fi inside of it and even anticipated that those things, those technologies would change every five years. So we could take them out and put new ones in. But Hayden called Pat and called me and said there was, and, and thanks, Raleigh, you had negotiated this contract, and you have to talk about it later, uh, was have five holidays a year. We would be partners with the Park Service. Well, the first one, and I've forgotten which it was. Maybe it was, uh, maybe it was the 4th of July. So <laughs> Doreen and Pat drove up and down Indian Head Highway, and uh, Ruth Rogers and I went over and got her wreath, and the Park Service at one point, wasn't it maybe an assistant to an assistant superintendent and they had a wreath that was 13 inches about the size of something <laughs> i don't know what you compare it to and had a little stand and they made a little speech and they and the musicians i think were three musicians from one of the service bands they tooted a couple of songs folded them up and left and that was it so but now look what that had grown into Thanks to again with Pat and again with other people on the Friends, uh, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15 television stations being there, a lot of radio play, uh, all the all the embassies being there, huge crowds for the least rate. But that was Hayden's dream always was the leaf reef leg ceremonies. But yeah. the first one was a very small reef in about 12 <laughs> people. <laughs> Well, I, Hayden wanted it to be a welcoming place, not a morose, uh, dark place. Uh, yeah. It was a terrible war, but uh, great things were accomplished because of it in terms of bettering the world and for democracy and so forth. And I think it has become that. I mean, you, you go there today and at any time of day, really, not just in, on special days when there's events, but people gather there. And I think it's terrific. I'm 87. I've gotten to the point I'm telling my grandchildren what I've done. I, you know, I, I bought those books and given them to all my grandchildren. We've been through them, but it's the the biggest, the biggest thing, and it's I think it's what we set out to do, and it has been done, is honoring those yeah. in World War II. Not only those who served in uniform, but the home it's front, easy. which was yeah. so important. Uh, I feel the same way that this memorial, uh, we've spent so much time, so many weeks and months and years working on getting it to be what we wanted it to be. Uh, I, I look at it every time I go there, I look at it and I look at the various parts and think of the arguments and decisions we had to make about those parts. And I'm just so proud to have been a small part of the group that worked on that to get it done. 
And I'm very, very, I am, that's my favorite memorial in Washington, to say the least. You know, I would just uh, sum up by saying that uh, in my lifetime, I mean, I was in the state legislature and the Navy, and I did a few other things. And I think that those years that I spent in Washington on the site and design committee for the National World War II Memorial uh, probably are something I did that will have more lasting significance than anything else I did in uh, yeah. my lifetime. And I uh, it was great to be associated with the people like Pat and Frank and Hayden and, and uh, Helen uh, in doing this. Uh, it was a unique moment in, in history. I think uh, the country was ready for it. Uh, and it, it, we got the job done. And now uh, we'd be happy to take your questions as to if you have any for us. Uh, and thanks for being a part of this today.